I've worked in other nations, you know, with the Cree, the Chippewans, and all, all that. And to me, it was very important to know their traditional way of doing things. It's always a good idea to find out what the local protocols are before approaching a knowledge keeper. It's best, to, for instance, to ask uh, someone, an acquaintance, a friend, what should one do? Because, for instance, with tobacco, there are many ways of offering it. So I'm not going to impose my way on, I'm a visitor to them, unless like I'm a visitor here. I have to respect the ways here. The protocol of a knowledge keeper would be respect and honor that you are in somebody else's territory. Listen to what they are saying and they may do things differently, but remember, you're respecting their territory. Respect is very important to wherever you go visit, you know, so. In her community, if someone were to have a request of me, they would bring a small gift and present the gift. By presenting, I mean, you know, they might put the gift on the table and I can either accept the gift or not. <laughs> if I consent to help them out, I will take the gift. But if I don't consent to help them, then I won't accept the gift. Not accepting the gift is not what would be called rejection, but it might be I don't have that expertise. I have no knowledge of that particular ceremony. I would recommend that you go and talk to your uncle instead. So, But you can present a, a gift to someone when making a request. I would say to make it equivalent to a doctor. So whatever a doctor gets paid, you should be paying the knowledge keeper. Some places it'll be, um, you know, like $200 for opening prayers, but you've got to also consider traveling time and everything else. So it could be a lot bigger, you know, like for me when, I, when they call me to heal, say up somewhere, uh, they pay, Say, say I'm, I'm going to New Zealand or or I'm going up north. They pay for my flights, they pay for my lodgings, and then they pay me a fee as well. So that becomes enough for me to help feed my family. But it's not always like that. Some people just say, well, we've offered tobacco, and that's enough. And that's been a very difficult thing for our elders because where the original or the teachings from before is the medicine men and women and the healers were always provided for everything and their families. But if you're like a family member and you've only got this, you don't, I've been paid with chickens, you know? So it depends on each individual that comes, right? But not to be selfish. Don't be selfish because we're not selfish with you. Be kind, be generous, and we will, we're going to be that way anyway with you. No matter what, we will love you through. Like I said, I guess, you know, depending on where the person is coming from that, that is doing the interview, you know, they'll give up some material and, uh, you know, sometimes they give different items, you know, and tobacco. In my nation, like the Cree Nation, you know, 
and the offering was very important to give like a tobacco. The tobacco offering is a contract. It's in the legal world, it would be a piece of paper as a contract. It means I promise I'll be there. 